Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again. Today we are talking about patch bays, what they are, what they are used for and how we can use them to interconnect all of our outboard gear, whether they effects gear or processing gears, so that it makes it really easy to have quick interconnection between all of our gears that we have in our home studio. Now, depending on the size of your home studio and how many artboard gears you have, you may or may not need any patch bays. Uh, it all depends of how many times and uh, how often you connect and disconnect your gear, um, whether if it's your effects gear or your preamp and so on, as you're using different instruments to record or to mix. So if you find yourself uh, you know, constantly plugging and unplugging um, uh, connections from the back of your gears, then you may need um, a patch bay. So let's have a quick look of me unboxing my latest uh, patch bay, which is the Behringer's PX3000. And very short review of uh, all of its functions, and then we will go into detail of how we can actually plan and interconnect all of our gears into our patch bay for much useful and much more uh, flexible way of organizing our home studio. Okay, you've got it out of the box. Well, first box so this is what the box uh, looks like and that's how it comes in so basically uh, the ultra patch pro px3000 is a balanced 48 point uh, patch bay okay out of the box and out of the packaging let's get it out of the way now, um, patch bays, they are not cheap. They are quite expensive, especially the balanced ones. Uh, this one uh, cost me about 179 uh, Australian dollars that included free delivery, which was the good things. Uh, a lot of other places um, had plus delivery costs. Patch bays are really, really useful. I know I probably haven't gone through uh, with a lot of instruction, because this was just unboxing and review. Um, as far as the unit is concerned, it's quite heavy. It's all made of metal and all inside it, it's got um, all the connections, uh, all uh, you know, heavy uh, 6.5 sockets. So it's quite heavy. It's got the switches that you can adjust between normal, true and half normal. And if you want to know how they are and how they operate, they are uh, sort of you know graphs here to illustrate you uh, how they work or you can read like I did you can read the manual and learn all about how they work so um, I will plug it in and see if uh, it works out well and I might give you my final um, review on the Behringer's PX3000 Ultra Patch Pro so what is a patch bay Patch bay is basically a series of sockets on both sides of the rack unit. So you have front sockets and then you have the back sockets and they are pretty much identical. So what are patch bays uh, used for? They're very handy if you have lots of gear and um, to be able to interconnect between each of your gear um, into each other using the cables. Um, it will eliminate the option of going to the back of your desk and connecting and disconnecting cables all the time because you have all of your gear coming in to the back of the patch bay and then allows you to have a central point of all of your gear inputs and outputs available right at the front. 
Having all of them right here available, it really saves lots of time if you need to change any of your configuration. So if you are using, let's assume, a pre microphone preamp to record a vocal, and later on you want to be able to use that microphone preamp for other purposes uh, within your recording or within your mixing, you don't have to go back of your desk and unplug and plug cables again to be able to record uh, or use that option. But having the patch bay, all you need to do is use patch leads to be able to repatch and reconfigure without accessing back of your desk. One of the general rules with patch bays is the top rows are always outputs and the bottom rows are inputs and they are marked A and B and they're sort of like they go in pairs. So you, in this case I have 24 pairs of sockets at the front and 24 pairs at the back. Uh, mark A1 to A24, B1 to B24. Now depending how you configure your patch bay connections and usually patch bays have switches to allow you to configure anywhere between normally up to three and sometimes four different configurations to uh, allow you to set how you want your back connection A to be connected to the front and how B is connected to the front B. At the same time how A and B pair are interconnected and what happens when you plug something in here. Now there are also two different types of patch bays. There are unbalanced patch bays like this one here, the Behringer Ultra Patch Pro model PX2000. This is an unbalanced patch bay and there's also the one that you've seen me uh, unbox is the Behringer Ultra Patch Pro PX3000 and that's a balanced one which is sitting on my rack. And the differences are obviously the socket connection having balanced and unbalanced connection. The physical differences between unbalanced and balanced connections. The unbalanced has tip and a sleeve, um, so TS connection, where the balance connections have three, as tip, ring and sleeve, TRS. The difference between unbalanced and balanced is that the balance connections are less perceptible into electrical noise and interference, where the unbalanced ones are not. Now there are, as I mentioned, unbalanced and balanced patch bays. The balanced ones are obviously more expensive than the unbalanced ones. So if you like to have, you know, future-proof your home studio, you'd be better off saving a little bit more extra money and buying a balanced one. That way, uh, even if you have unbalanced leads that you want to connect, you can still use your balance patch bay, but not the other way around. There are usually three and sometimes up to four different types of uh, connections that a patch bay will allow you to select. Like the Behringer Ultra Patch Pro model PX2000 has four different types of connections that it will allow you to select using the switch here. Where the PX3000, the balanced one, has only three types of configuration that you can select. But there are common ones, which are the three the balanced one has, that most patch bays will allow you to select from. The three uh, most common options for uh, types of uh, connections on patch bay are the normalized, uh, the true and half normalized. Obviously the normalized and the true being the most common way of connecting all your gear into patch bay. And the fourth one that is available on the uh, PX2000 is the parallel one. On the PX2000 as well as on the PX3000 on Behringer, um, there is an illustration of each type of connection and how it actually works available and it's printed. So you quite easily can look at it and decide which type of configuration per pair you want to configure because each one of these switch will configure each A and B pair. I will briefly talk about the two common types, the normalized or the normal 
and the true or open type um, configuration for patch bays because those are the most common ones. Let's talk about normalized connections. If we have the switch set as normalized for the A1 and B1 pair, you would have an output lead connected to the first socket A, let's assume from your audio interface auxiliary output 1 or even main output left output that is connected there. And then this would be connected to your, let's say, uh, your uh, speaker monitor amplifier or if it's a powered speaker then going to your left speaker. Having a normalized settings without being plugged anything at the front, that means your left output from your audio interface is automatically directed to your left speaker. Let's assume you want to connect your audio interface's left output to something else. Then you plug it right at the top, A1. Now what happens is the connection between your A and B at the back sockets have been disconnected and now your audio interface output, the left output is now coming out of here. Then you can use that to plug into something else. Um, at the same time, let's assume that you want to plug your uh, keyboard or CD player and you want to hear it from your speakers. All you need to do is plug your keyboard right at the bottom, the B. Now that disconnects this top one, audio interface, and your keyboard is now connected to your speakers, or your CD player is now connected to your um, speakers. So that's how flexible it is, and that's the normal configuration, and most of the time, that's what you would have set up. So let's talk about the true or open connection. With that setting, on the switches, it's basically anything at the A connection sockets is goes to the front and B goes to the front B as well. So there's no pairing between A and B. They never get connected. Now you might think, well, how would you use that? What would be used for? Well, let's assume these are outputs of your rack mounted CD player or your output from your sound module, and so on. That means you have them accessible right here. Then you can connect your CD player from the top A, remember, top A is always output. You always should consider using tops as output. Now you have your CD player, then you can connect it to, let's say, an input of your audio interface. So that's how true works. Same with input. So if you have something which is input only, uh, let's let's say your other set of speakers that you have, you can easily connect now your CD player output into you know a, a speaker or even um, a cassette deck that has input and output. So that's how you have access to the back of your cassette deck or um, or DVR recorder. Or, or that recorder as outputs and inputs. So you can easily patch them into any configuration. So that's how true works. They go straight through. A and B, no, not having any connection in between. Now once you have your patch bay, the next thing to do before you do even any connection at all is to plan it. And then by planning, it means writing down all of the gear that you have and each gear's input and output option so that you can set all of your patch bays required, uh, normalize and trues and group them together. And this is my example of how I have my patch bay organized so that all of my first 12 uh, sockets pairs actually are normalized and the other 12 are the true connections. So I have all of my audio interface outputs going to my speakers and my uh, effect gears and compressors and, uh, and so on, where my other half 
are connections that's coming from my keyboard, coming from my uh, cassette deck, uh, my uh, DVR, and, and, and so on. So those are true connections coming in and other connections that are uh, going out. So it's really important to write down and plan how you want your um, patch bay to work so that once you have it all set and all connected at the back, you never have to go behind your desk and reconnect anything again. So here's a quick uh, graphical example of how I have things set up. You can see I have the patch bay right in the middle and then I have my audio interface, the audio box 1818 VSL at the top and then I have my studio channel at the bottom and then my TC Helicon if, uh, vocal effects unit at the bottom and then my speakers. So you can see how I have all of those things interconnected and they are all normalized connections. So my output one and two go to my small um, Logitech speakers. And then you can see how I have my main output left and right from AudioBox 1818 VSL going into my uh, Behringer Ultra Curve Pro, which is um, a graphic equalizer. Uh, and then from coming out of the graphic uh, DEQ2496 graphical equalizer going into my Aris E8 left and right speakers. So at any time I'd be able to patch through and interconnect any one of those connections uh, to the front panel. But at normal circumstances I don't have to touch anything unless something is different than I want to do. And as you can see on the uh, right hand side how I have all of my outputs of my um, audio effects units so I can patch them through and at the same time all my keyboards and synthesizers and sound modules uh, come out on the uh, right hand side as true connections. So did you find my information about patch bays and what are they used for and how to uh, put them into work in your home studio, then uh, give me the thumbs up. That way I know it was useful. And if you have any questions regarding to uh, patch bays, um, anything that didn't make much sense to you, please do feel comment below and I'm more than happy to answer them for you. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. That way you're always kept up to date with uh, any new videos that I upload. And uh, also you must welcome to visit my uh, website recordingstudio9.com where uh, if you actually register on my website you will also have a, a whole new set of pages open up for you as a member where we talk about Project Unplugged which is part of a series of videos I'm doing of recording a song using Presonus Studio One version 3 Prime the free DAW. So you'll be able to log in and download all of the project files, including all of the recording tracks that I have done so far. And, and you can play around with them, implement them, and might join in to the project. So I hope to see you there as well. You can also visit my Facebook page and very soon Twitter as well. Um, you can search me on Twitter uh, as Recording Studio 9. You might find me there as well. So until next time, thanks for watching. Have a great time making music and enjoy your patch bay. Cheerio. Bye-bye.